today's topic is visual perception with respect to reading and writing in autism so for those of you who have seen my last uh, webinar on cognition uh, this is a this, this is a continuation of it or rather the both are interrelated <coughs> so what exactly is visual perception now all the data that we see but before i begin with that let me just explain that i'll be splitting this into three parts the what is visual perception and how it affects our daily activities and with respect to reading and writing in autism so visual perception with respect to autism would be the second half <coughs> um so what exactly is visual perception many of you here would be aware but cons assuming that you all are not aware i'll just explain it in very simple terms uh, all the data that we see hear smell um, experience is interpreted analyzed and perceived by body so that is called that is basically called as perception but all the data that we see okay using la you know, using light shadow shape color um, the depth that is specifically visual perception okay the perception uh, perception we see in all sensory systems but here we are talking about visual perception uh, specifically ability to interpret uh, the different size and shapes and colors and depth all together and uh, come to a conclusion or draw judgment that okay this is this or that is visual perception <clears throat> now there are many types of perceptions uh, many types of visual perceptions mainly form consistency uh, visual discrimination visual memory spatial uh, relationships figure ground perception visual sequencing so now uh, this we talk about when we talk about autism and visual perception um why why do we think you know there's a commonest question that um uh, a parent has asked that why is visual perception important now all this all all our senses or, or everything is important for our daily day to day activities daily routine based activities so visual perception is again equally important now why i'll explain for example i am a child and i want to climb the stairs but i'm not able to perceive the height or perceive the depth so how am i going to judge where should i put my hand or where should i put my foot so this this is where my uh, difficulty with perception affects my play then i'll try to avoid the uh, slide now all the areas are interrelated some of them we call it si dysfunction or no but that i'll explain later that everything is interrelated cognition si fine motors gross motor perception so we as a therapist cannot work work on a specific area we have to use a holistic approach we have to work on uh, all the areas together that is why we say multi goal multi purpose activities or goal directed activities for the same reason now that difficulty to climb a slide or difficulty to climb down a staircase may be a si concern but it can be a depth perception concern also we are not here to judge why we we all we work we try and work on the problem areas we try to sort the concern we try to help the child there are other areas like for example uh, reading and writing now writing is a very complex task for example copywriting the child you are asking the child to copy from board now this simple activity has so many layers to it the child is cop reading from the board the child is coming back to the book the child is figuring out where he was last between the lines and then by that time the child has forgotten what word it was or what the spelling was so the child again goes back the child again tries the, the whole process is repeated so many times that all the other children have copyright the finished with the copywriting task and the teacher has moved ahead or erased the board so these are the areas this is why visual perception is important it affects our daily activities it affects the child's reading and writing skills in this way the overall speed we you know we see many times the parent comes to us saying that the child is slow overall slow in all his activities so th that slowness need not necessarily be a gross motor thing or you know a physical thing there are many components to it <coughs> eating <laughs> a slow eater for seat agreed partly sensory concerns but the child finds it very difficult to eat independently you know using this visual motor control in what apart from perception using a spoon to 
no, uh, scoop through the food, to get it to the mouth, to uh, perceive the senses, whether I need more water to gulp it down. There are too many areas involved here. <coughs> I will try to stick to reading and writing mainly because that is what the topic is about. <coughs> dressing. Um, no, for example, dress, dressing t-shirt or shorts. So, of course, one leg balance is important for dressing of lower extremity. But a child having a uh, child above seven years old and still having difficulties with dressing lower extremities by himself may have concerns with perception. So he's not able to you know, judge the depth. So he, you will find that his balance is good, but because of his inability to judge that depth or height, or you no, know, how much should I lift the foot up? How much should I, you no, know, uh, abduct my foot? That that all abduct my all that matters in you no know, uh, him dressing independent. He, the child will simply then give up. Forget fine motors and forget the buttons and zips and all. But the simple task of just pulling the pants up is a task for him. Or simply, you know, when many times we see children putting t-shirts out inside out or, you know, front, uh, the back side is front and front side is back. This need not be a concern, a perception concern every time. This can be an attention also. This can be a learning stage also. But if it is happening consistently and persistently, then it may be a perception concern. <coughs> Sorry. Um, many areas overlap here, like I said. So, um, we um, we find many children who are um, like figure ground perception. For example, if I tell the child, go bring your red car or go bring your bottle. And if that bottle is under the shade of a chair, the child may not be able to find it. It's simple light, light and shadow play. Okay. The, the simple act of finding his own bottle or finding a red block among the boxes of block uh, among a box full of blocks is difficult for a child. Now imagine if the small small things are getting affected. If you see a bigger picture, there are so many uh, so many uh, stages that the child you no know, lags behind where the others go ahead and the child is still stuck. Now, now with th when this happens frequently, for example, uh, the example that I gave you with, with uh, copywriting or or stair climbing or slide climbing, then the child tries, you no, know, starts to dislike that activity or tries to give up on that activity. That I don't want to climb, I don't like slides, or I don't want to dress independently, or I simply don't want to write. <coughs> now, what? Well, nowadays, there's a new term, mental imagery used, that is a mind's eye, but we come to it when we talk about autism. Now, with respect to autism, so like I said pre in previous video, a lot lot of key key therapy should be focused on cognition. So same here, perception and cognition. So with aut uh, children having autism, the main main concern apart from all this, forget perception and sensory, and the mainly their arousal fluctuates. So today the child may show uh, reversals in writing. Tomorrow the child may write perfectly fine. Again, uh, day after tomorrow, the child may write all, all the letters and reversals. The, today, the child will know how to write his name. The, tomorrow, the child may not know. Or morning, he's written his name and evening, he's not writing his name. That is not, uh, it is very difficult for us to know whether it is a perception difficulty or whether it is the arousal that fluctuates. So, just a minute. So we try to work mainly firstly on arousal and attention and I'm not saying we target a single area but yes we start targeting all the areas together. Now for us to start targeting all the areas together the main main uh, thing here should, would be that we start early intervention. We, we talk about so this OT intervention and reading and writing concerns I would try to mix it up because separating them will cause too much chaos. We take one thing at a time and work on the... <coughs> so, they may be, uh, for example, you know, we see many children with autism very good with jigsaw puzzles. But that doesn't mean they are good with perception. Okay, puzzle is one part. Okay, but At the same time, good with puzzles but unable to write between the lines or uses the entire page available to write just two or three words. No, huge moments, uh, uses all the space available. <coughs> so we try to work on generalization. We try to work on consistency of the task. 
we try to uh, break down the task into small, smaller things so consistency would be uh, okay the child is doing puzzles yes the child no the child is very good with visual discrimination and spatial relations with one activity but what about the other activity so the command following for example does the child understand no position in space so does the child understand that the pen is standing or sleeping or the pen is near the glass or put the pen next to the glass so we try to work on these concerns <coughs> so for these things normally an integrated approach would help you know and the otest will work on the ot part the remedial educators would work on the remedial part the mother would work at the uh, um, generalization at the household level no in, in involving the child in the day to day activities and uh, social skill training would take care of the sizing and you know uh, the boundary concept at, at the social level now um many of the uh, with respect to reading we've seen many of the uh, kids with autism have hyperlexia hyperlexia is um, in very very basic terms a very very fast reader and a ability to recollect everything that they've read mainly a very fast reader you give them a book and they're very quick to read but this does not necessarily mean that they are able to comprehend what they've read they will read everything and anything that you give you know beyond their ability for example they are at a 5 year old level the ch child of 5 year 5 years of age will read a book which is of third grade or fourth grade but that doesn't necessarily mean that he is able to understand all the chapters or all the stories given in that book that is basically hyperlexia now keeping in mind one thing here not all autism all kids with autism have hyperlexia and not all children having hyperlexia have autism they are two separate things just that sometimes these two are uh, intertwined or no or they seen together as a common <coughs> so then as as i said in my last webinar we try to focus on the cognition part more then that hyperlexic kid would be on par with comprehension also and he would be an equally good reader and able to comprehend it together now as with hyperlexia not all children with autism have reading and writing and since yes majority have majority of them may have but if early intervention is started if they are no if they are on therapy since quite an uh, early age you see by the time they they finish their preschools many of their concerns are gone i i have seen many children you know who have been diagnosed and who have been undergoing therapies and all whose writing are so good they are much 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 better than many of our adults including me so uh, in fact in fact the the need to be perfect leads to them writing very well between the lines now what can we do to bring about reading and writing in children having autism no now we know the why's and what's and types so what can be done so the first and foremost thing would be early intervention as soon as we see some some signs or as soon as we see or we get a diagnosis as as if i am a parent if i get a diagnosis okay my child may be on spectrum no spectrum is a huge word spectrum spectrum means uh, some something that covers a wide area so my child may or may not have reading and writing concerns my child may or may not have fine motor so it's a very vague 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 term so what we do is we and rather than focusing uh, also apart from early intervention rather than focusing on one area i want only my child only to go have speech therapy or i want my child only to have uh, occupational therapy no everything together is going to work on different different areas and help your child show a good improvement as a uh, you know uh, as a overall individual uh, in uh, in home environment in school as well as in you know a play environment um, so for example if the child starts occupational therapy and the child is having uh, you know i have like you no know, recently i met a parent who felt that initially once the child was diagnosed at 3 years of age you know he showed all red flags of autism so the mother was adamant that for one year she is going to have ot and then she is going to start speech and then she she is going to stop all this ot and speech and move ahead with rems remedial education no this is not how it works when the remedial educator is teaching the letter formations and you know writing between the lines we work on perception we we as an otest occupational therapist 
वी वर्क ऑन दो विजुअल मोटर कंट्रोल वी वर्क ऑन दाइन मोटर स्किल्स वी वर्क ऑन सेटिंग टॉलरेंट स्टेबिलाइजिंग यूज ऑफ बोथ हैंड्स सो वी सपोर्ट द लर्निंग दैट इज हैपनिंग इन रेमेडियल एजुकेशन ओके दीज थिंग्स गो टूगेदर नाउ वी आर यूजिंग वन एक्टिविटी दैट फोकस इज ऑन डिफरेंट एरियाज फॉर एग्जाम्पल द चाइल्ड इज डूइंग पजल और द चाइल्ड इज डूइंग ट्रेसिंग द चाइल्ड इज डूइंग ऑब्स्टेकल कोर्स सो विथ वन एक्टिविटी वी आर टारगेटिंग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट एरियाज मे बी बैलेंस कॉर्डिनेशन अटेंशन फोकस्ड सीक्वेंसिंग फाइन मोटर्स परसेप्शन स्पेशल रिलेशनशिप बट दोज थिंग्स दैट द चाइल्ड इज नो एब्जॉर्बिंग एंड ट्राइंग टू रिकॉल एंड स्टोर is helping him in remedial education to learn the formation of letters now we use sensory approaches so so we can use multi sensory approach to teach them reading and writing the same thing no or uh, using different medias different textures different um uh, different household items to work on the letter formation to work on the uh, tracing patterns also one more thing uh, many of the children with autism have low low perception of pain is for example most of the therapists who have worked know how hard a lego can no hurt you or how hard it pinches but a child is okay to walk all over the legos and no uh, be still playful so this sense of stereognosis i know that this is pen or this is a hair clip or this is a coin or this is a glass so we work on these areas also so working on small no 10 small areas resulting in improvement in one big area <coughs> with reading you no know, as i said earlier the sooner the better so we can start once the child is able to read through alphabets and all we can start with the child's name we you know there are many uh, magnets or stickers available we can put them on the child's uh, cupboard or drawer you no know? so we start with just the child's name everywhere for example dhara everywhere dhara 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 then we begin with the parent's name or mother's name so no dara mama dara mama then dara mama dada so this is my cupboard this is a, the child also learns different the child may learn sorting the child may understand the concept of your and mine and the child learns to read these three words also if the child you no know, we use high interest uh, words or you know things that the child is obsessed with or very into it for example if the child is into cars so we can teach him car names if the child is into food most of our children have learned to uh, use pe- uh, no read pizza or ice cream or milk or if every day if the child is going uh, going to, uh, with parent to buy groceries and milk let him read the shop name or the building gate name or no the brand name so in here in india we have amul so every most of the children they all learn to read amul for example uh, same goes with the building name same goes with all the brands if you have sony tv if you have lg tv start reading with small small names once the child reads a so n y so n so a so so that this is gradually going to help him in reading further okay all this are high interest words and things that are passing in front of his eyes daily you no know, all those electrical gadgets you no know, every day he sees even for his name you can have labels everywhere on his books on his toys um, on his toy boxes on his water bottle and most of them have but just we have to make it a practice for them to read the name also high interest words meaning uh, some of the kids the hyperlexic kids may start reading really dif- uh, or, or difficult words beautiful and forest and century so we start with the meaning also so what did you learn from this line what did you understand from this line you know, comprehension is again a difficult part so we have to start with story storytelling you know one line story two line story moving to paragraphs there are lots of flash cards available picture cards available these are this all uh, tactics that i'm saying is for mostly for preschoolers okay uh, the uh, junior senior or the kindergarten students um the otis will be able to help till maybe first second third grade once the more concepts start the remedial education and special education would be able to support the child better with reading and math our job is to that uh, here in india we have four line book and the child has to write between red and blue lines and some words between blue and red lines so which is where we come into picture and try that the child learns before entering the higher standards or no higher grades 
वन थिंग टू कीप इन माइंड योर वुड बी वी कीप इट वेरी रूटीन बेस्ड सिंस दे आर सिंस दे लाइक रिपीटेशन एवरी डे इफ ही इज वॉचिंग धराज हाउस और एवरी डे इफ ही इज वॉचिंग नो दिस कबर्ड दिस अमूल मिल्क दिस ब्रांड दिस दे टेन टू लर्न टेन डेज दे रीड इलेवन डे दे विल लर्न ट्वेल्व डेज दे रीड थर्टीन डेज दे विल लर्न सेम गोज फॉर राइटिंग लेट्स ट्राई टू बी वेरी कंसिस्टेंट वेरी very uh, um, you know uh, use their repetition to teach them their things we use their strength to teach them their things things that they are lacking so um, mainly generalization generalization is you no know, writing with me but not writing with you writing with mama but not writing with papa uh, consistency so today he'll write good tomorrow he'll not write good so so rather than just focusing on reading and writing we try to as an uh, oh, as a therapist or as a parent we see to it that the child child works uh, no we are working not child we are working on all the areas not only cognition not only perception not only fine motors not only gross motors so we select activities that are you know one activity and uh, majority of our goals are done so simple you know if you create an obstacle course the child takes one magnetic letter from your climbs through the obstacles through different senses uh, using different senses goes there and sticks you no know? so for example dhara so i'll take b during my first round then h then a then r and, and then in the end he reads or he can simply copy something that you write and the child is copying you know, whatever word for example read r e a d so he goes takes r and then he again gets e then a and d also many times i've seen that their rote memory is very good the child are children are able to you know uh, use rote memory very well they gra but they are not able to understand uh, as a parent or as a teacher let's make an effort to teach them the question words what w h a t is what r e a d is read d r e w is draw you can make flash cards of it it's, it takes just 2 3 days for them to learn this but it it helps them tremendously when when they are giving a task so when as a parent or as a teacher will simply write draw a circle so draw a circle maybe i'll draw you no know, dotted circle the child may know every day we are doing drawing circle but d r a w is draw the child is not aware once he learns to read that keyword which automatically the child's life is made easy okay draw karna hai okay no I, all i have to do is just draw all i have to do is just fill in the blank all i have to do is match so many of the times the child knows the activity but doesn't understand what is the question what am i supposed to do we use many times you'll find join dots for for 3 to 5 year olds of kids on autism spectrum join a to z or join 1 to 20 so all the alphabets are given in random uh, you know random uh, sequence and the child has to go from a to b b to c c to d but because it is written join a to z it goes from a to z all the other letters are bypassed so join a to z join a dot dot b dot dot c dot 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 z no let us simplify it for them we know what are the limitations so please do not let us not confuse them with writing join a to z once they know it once no first two through two three days they are uh, get they get used to doing this then they learn okay no this is how i'm supposed to do so let us simplify let us break down activities into a smaller set so that this becomes easy for them for us join a to z is a very simple task but for them and what for them that child will feel i did right and it is so easy a and z i connected the two things and then as a teacher or as a parent we would be very demotivated are what happened no he could not do even this activity so there he is not wrong so uh, early intervention multi sensory approaches uh, rehab team together you know working together would only get bring about the results with reading and writing not only ot or not only remedial education not only home schooling not only as a parent some of the parents i understand no many or most of the parents are capable enough but no sometimes we need support and it's okay to take help from a professional using high interest words flash cards using the uh, daily words that we see around the house all the brand names or all the logos and no to teach the children and uh, using routine based <coughs> structure consistent practice will help to bring about you no know, reading and learning in them just keep in mind uh, many of the the speed of children will vary you know if we, if we have twins with autism one of the child may learn very quickly and the other may take time it's okay they have their own strengths and weaknesses we learn to respect them
I guess I've covered most of the areas. 